How's it going, everyone? This is Derek Plavin, and welcome to episode 53. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is basically a free online jazz guitar course that unfolds in a logical sort of manner and keeps building upon itself. So, if you really want to benefit, I would go back to the beginning and try as best as you can to go in order. I know that a lot of the videos can be long, but what you could do is watch this video here since you clicked on it, and if you like it, you can go back and watch maybe the first three or four episodes, and then you could take it from there. And I'm also available for private lessons and have a lot of available accompanying PDFs that go along with a lot of the videos on this channel, and all that stuff can be found on my website and Patreon. So, as you can see, today I'm going to be talking about the particular style of picking that is more or less generally referred to Benson style picking, which of course was made, you know, really apparent and popular by the great George Benson. Now, this video is kind of similar to the last video in that I'm discussing something that I feel can be really beneficial for you, potentially, but not something that would be 100% essential if you really wanted to become a great jazz guitarist. Just like I was talking about how the kind of pick you might use can have an effect on your technique and the overall results that it produces, so will your picking style, obviously. After this video today, I'm going to be getting into some actual technical exercises that I think really can have the biggest impact on your overall technique, you know, assuming you put in the work, but you'll still be able to do these exercises with any kind of picking style that you like. However, you know, with some experimentation, you may find that this Benson style of picking actually works really good for you and is giving you superior results. And actually, as a matter of fact, I am going to still show you one exercise at the end of this video today that just kind of intentionally fits into this particular style of picking, I think, really well. And you can compare how this particular exercise may be for you doing it, you know, with this Benson style of picking versus the way that you may be picking now or any other style of picking. In addition to this, I think I should say that I am not a professionally licensed educator on this topic. I wouldn't call myself a certified Benson style picking guitar player by any means, and I'm always, you know, unintentionally breaking the form anyway and kind of doing old habits, which I'm not trying to do, but I just don't think that I'm that fluent with it yet. But that doesn't mean that I don't have anything helpful to say. In fact, the only reason why I'm calling the stuff that I'm about to show you Benson style picking is really just because I don't know what else to call it. And that's just how a lot of you would already possibly know what I'm talking about because you've heard of this before. And to me, this is basically Benson style picking, or at least more or less what I think it's about just from my own personal experience. But, to me, it really doesn't matter what you label this stuff as. Um, just trying to suggest some helpful right-hand technique tips. That's it. Alright, so that little disclaimer is really for all the nitpicky people who may be trying to criticize and say that that's not really what true Benson style picking is. And even if that's the case, I would just say, yeah, that's cool. You know, you got any helpful tips that you could put in the comment to, you know, maybe tweak what I'm doing and make it even better, because I'm always looking to improve. So let me know what you think. Okay, so with all that said, let's get into it. Now, unlike the last video where I was talking about pick choice, I'm not really going to discuss my background when it comes to, you know, my picking style before I started trying out the Benson style picking. And that's just because I don't really think that there's much to learn from comparing the way that I used to pick versus the way that I try to pick now. And although I most certainly used to have some sort of a consistent way that I picked, quite frankly, it was unintentional. and. I never really put a lot of thought or consideration into how I may actually want to pick before making the choice to intentionally try Benson style picking. 
So that last statement there just sounded a little weird to me watching it back. So I just wanted to clarify and say that it's not like I had no idea what I was doing with my right hand at all. I think it's just that it wasn't as specific and I didn't really consider the inevitability of like the position that my right hand would end up in or maybe the way that the pick would inevitably end up attacking the string. So it just wasn't as specific or thought out basically. So you may be in the same boat. Perhaps you never really thought too much about how exactly you're picking. And now you may be looking to try something in particular that you can possibly develop. Now, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm basically going to go through a list of various individual components and subtle technical adjustments that I think can all contribute to being able to do this picking style effectively. And for the most part, if you focus on making sure that you're trying to do all these things, I find that they tend to auto-correct you significantly into producing better results. I'm going to be going through these things in an order that suggests starting with things that you may say are more generic and progressing towards things that are more and more uniquely pertaining only to this particular picking style. Okay, so I'm gonna get into it now, and like I just said, I'm gonna do this starting with things that are more generic, and this first thing that I'm gonna say now, to me, really has less to do with what kind of picking style we're talking about, like the way you hold the pick and your hand position and all that, and perhaps more to do with the picking technique, meaning things like alternate picking, economy sweep picking, like all downstrokes, so things of that nature. So the first thing to understand with this picking style is that as far as the picking technique goes, generally speaking, you're going to be, you know, ascending in pitch or going from the low strings to the high strings with economy picking, and then you're going to be going backwards. So from high strings to low strings with alternate picking. And this is a pretty common formulation anyway. And I'm sure most of you guys know what I'm talking about, but for those who don't, Economy picking is basically when you have an odd number of notes per string and you're going from one string to the next. Instead of going like true alternate, for example, would be down, up, down, and then on the next string you would go up to start with. But with economy picking, you would go down, up, down, down, all right? So most of you guys should be aware of that, the difference between economy and alternate. And just to kind of give you an example, if I play this common shape for what you may see as a C Dorian shape, or one of the caged fingerings for a B flat major scale, or maybe you want to see it as G Aeolian, you know, it's all the same thing, but it's just a shape and a position on the guitar. So if I play this shape for you and I ascend, you know, with economy picking, And one thing to notice, the tone drill down there. Um, so I picked this position because the second string that I play, the A string, I only have two uh, notes on it. So I'm just pointing that out because if you have an even number of notes per string, it's still always going to be alternate anyway because you're going down, up, and then it makes sense and com feels comfortable to go right to the downstroke on the next string. So that's why I use this example. But all the other ones is uh, economy picking. And then when you get to the top, so if I go backwards, it's just alternate the whole way through. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, down, right? So that's the first thing to understand with this style of picking. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to say is that when you're playing your downstrokes, with the exception of playing on the high E string, you want to play what they call rest strokes, generally speaking, or kind of get in the habit of really playing a lot of your downstrokes as rest strokes. And for those of you who don't know what this is, basically when you hit the downstroke, you'd want the pick to land on the string underneath, right? So when you hit it, it's not like the pick ends like floating in space or just landing on the next string, basically, okay? And this has a lot of benefits to it, and I think that it maybe alters the tone a little bit, the articulation, the feel of all that, but one of the other good technical benefits of this is 
It gives you a fixed range of motion, especially for your downstrokes, which is what you're mostly playing anyway. So by giving yourself a fixed range of motion, especially when the tempos on different exercises start to get faster, it kind of makes it more efficient and easier to control, if that makes sense, all right? And a lot of people aren't aware of playing in this way, but this can have a big improvement on your playing if you start incorporating this. So, you know, I, I can play the same exact scale as I did before, you know, just all the downstrokes. I, I was doing that the whole time anyway, but you're just landing on the string below until you get to the high E, where of course you can't do that. And you don't have to worry about upstrokes landing on the string above. It doesn't really work like that, all right? So that would be the second thing. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to bring out now, I'm not going to say too much on this here because I'll probably have a whole video focusing on this topic, but more so with the left hand. But really what I'm talking about is your touch. And in this case, really the right hand contribution to your touch. And this matters at all tempos that you may play things at, but this will really come into importance when you start to play things at faster and faster tempos. And you may find that in order to do that with fluency and accuracy and all that, you're going to need to lighten up your touch a little bit. And like I said, I don't want to talk too much about this in this video, but it's good to be aware of. And when you're doing your exercises and the tempos are getting faster, you know, I don't really have anything to demonstrate, but you just want to kind of lighten up the pick. You don't really want it. It shouldn't be like you're digging into the, you know, stuff like that. It's going to be too much. If you have less pick going over the string and everything, it could be smoother and you can be more efficient with smaller, you know, gentler movements. That makes sense, all right? So that's all I'm going to say on that tip for now. So before moving to the next tip, I just want to point out because when a lot of people first become aware that this style of picking even exists, what they really notice is the visual aspect of like what the hand looks like. And it's very unique. You know, when Benson is playing everything, it's like it really looks like his hand is turned upside down. And now I can feel comfortable doing the same thing. But it was harder for my hand to kind of fall in that position when I first started trying this stuff out. And that stuff can help. And I'm going to save like that kind of tip for the end. Just so, you know, if you got everything else in place, consider that after. And that might be the last thing to get you where you need to be. But what I will say now is, although the visual aspect to, you know, seeing what it looks like may help you, I think that it's easier to kind of consider the things that I'm about to say now. And if you do those things first and then just try to play the way you're supposed to play, like I said, it may auto-correct you into the right hand position. So I'm going to go through some of these things now. So the first thing is just, you know, when the pick is coming across the string, whether it's an upstroke or a downstroke, you really want to consider the pick angle. Now, generally speaking, it doesn't have to be exact and you got to find what's comfortable for you. But I think typically when people start playing guitar, if they play with a pick, they're thinking about strumming or picking more with the pick like flat, where it's parallel with the ground and you're kind of coming across the string like that. And the biggest difference, even if it's not 100% perpendicular, is it's going to be more angled, where you're basically slicing with the pick as opposed to hitting with the flat pick, right? And if you do this along with the rest stroke, that will give you, you know, your basic sort of unit of picking or strumming the way you're going to play here. So if you put those things together, basically trying to slice the pick at more of an angle and a rest stroke, you know, that's the upstroke. But that's basically what you're doing. Right? And sometimes when I'm playing, it may not be, like I said, 100% perpendicularly angled. Although, when I'm doing a lot of reps on things, as you'll eventually see, you may find that your angle of your pick is shifting away from where you want it to be. And if you then adjust it to where you want, meaning that you kind of do make it more perpendicular, you may find that you're getting better results. So sometimes you're not thinking about it as much and you're still playing fine, but the angle is definitely good to be aware of. And I think the important thing to understand is you want to think about it more like you're slicing across the strings than you're just kind of flat picking because it'll give it less surface area and it'll just come across the string more efficiently. All right, moving along from that, 
The next thing that I would add, and this will make everything I just said even better, is you want to consider your thumb joint over here. And generally speaking, I find that for this style, you're keeping a straight thumb joint and you're not really bending it when you're playing. And this may feel weird for a lot of you at first, but if you consider this, I think that this really kind of auto-corrects a lot because you know that you have to hold the pick, you know you have to keep the thumb joint straight, I know that I want to slice down the strings and I want to do a rest stroke. So even just that information alone, you know, with a straight thumb joint but slicing, it's already kind of bringing my hand, you know, where it needs to be, basically, right? So really consider that. You don't want to be bending the thumb joint when you're playing. And the straighter and more steady and consistent you can keep it, the better it's probably going to be. And then from there, this one is maybe not the most important to me, but after we consider the thumb joint, you know, you want to consider how the pick is on your index finger. And I'd like to say that it's like a, you know, like a straight extension of your finger, if you could see. Um, but sometimes, considering how the hand needs to fall to be able to play the right way, like it might be more like shifted a little bit. I don't overthink that, but I just kind of see it as like an extension of the finger with, you know, a little bit of tip coming out so that I have a good grip on it and good control, basically. Right? So that's another thing to consider. So just a few things to finish this with here. So after you have all that down, the next thing, and this might happen naturally for you anyway, but you want to consider the pinky anchoring. Now, I don't mean the way a lot of people play these days where it kind of looks like they have a fist and they're kind of anchoring their pinky. I don't do that. It's really just a natural thing the way my hand rests. And I don't even think about it like I'm really anchoring my pinky. It's just sort of my hand resting on the pick guard, right? And this is really just for people in case they're doing everything else that I already said, but they're keeping more of like a floating hand. Like if I did that, like it just feels weird. That's why I don't think most people would do that naturally. But in case you are kind of doing that, just remember like everything I said and then just the side of the hand or the pinky just rests on the pick guard, right? All right, so after this, this next tip is another one of those things where I would say this will really come into importance when the exercises start to get faster and harder. And that would be to try to remember to keep your wrist, it's not really the wrist, just the overall position of your hand, wherever you're starting. You know, as you're playing through an exercise, if you look at my wrist, you just don't want it to like start angling or changing from wherever it was in the first place. Even if you start like that, and if that's where your comfort zone is, like stay in that position because you'll find as things start to get faster and you're playing, you know, you may break your form going back to old habits and it happens to me all the time. That's why I try to be aware of it. But I find that the more straight and consistently positioned I can keep my wrist, no matter what I'm working on, things tend to come out better, all right? So try not to break that form once you have it, all right? And then after that, the only other tip that I would say, and this is just almost like a safety net, if you consider all the things that I've already said and you're doing all of that, that's great. It should auto-correct you a lot of the way there, I think. But if all else fails, it can just be, you know, something having to do with the position of your arm where maybe you kind of play in a way where your arm is more like that or something. And I might just kind of say to think about bringing your whole arm and wrist around or, you know, like down and under so that you can get everything into the right position. And like I said, that should be happening anyway if we're doing a lot of these other things, but it's still possible that your arm position is kind of throwing it off a little bit. So if you consider everything, then throw that on to consider the whole visual aspect at the end where, you know, you're bringing your hand, you know, down and under and you're facing it upwards because that's what a lot of people think of when they think of this style but again all that stuff will, should just happen if you're doing all the other things anyway so those are all the tips that i would give you if you really want to start to get used to this and the thing to do is to start using this with all the exercises that we're going to get into going forward and if you start from a place of comfort and practice these things properly over time, you'll start to develop this picking style where it feels more and more comfortable for you, all right? So, like I said, I am going to show you one small, quick exercise now, and this is something that I do. When I do my whole, like, technical routine, this is the first thing that I start with every single time, and 
the only purpose of this is to just kind of get my hands like acquainted and you know just get things moving again I don't even increase the tempo or do a lot of reps on this because that will come immediately after with the other things that I do but this is just a good one to kind of really fit into the George Benson style picking because you could work on the rest strokes you can do it at a slow tempo and work on uh, your hand position and everything but also because here, let me just put the exercise up now and I'll explain. So basically, I'm not going to do this in time or anything right now, but technically it's in 7-8. So it takes, because it's a seven note pattern, so it takes two permutations to end up on the downbeat again. So basically, I'm going on the low E string, five, six, seven, with the fingers, you know, two, three, four. And then on the A string, I'm going four, five, six, seven, right? So that's basically what it is. And when I do this, I do this with a metronome and I put it on at 30 beats per minute and I play it as eighth notes, right? So show you what I mean. Two and three and four and Now, and that's basically a one time through, right? And then it repeats. So the reason why I think this little exercise lends itself really well to this style of picking also is because if you consider the economy picking down and alternate up, you know, if I went, say, for example, like four, five, th uh, four, five, six, seven on both, that would be more like a spider exercise, like those classic beginner exercises, because you have an even number of notes on every string, so it's gonna be alternate anyway and be comfortable and feel right. So by putting three notes per string on the first one, that gives you, you know, the two down strokes in a row to get comfortable with the economy going down. But then because we have four on the second string, you know, one, two, three, four, that ends with an up stroke. And then if we did alternate, you know, obviously we're going to the next string. We start with a down stroke again. So then the exercise is turning around and starting over basically, right? So if I had three notes per string on the second string and I went, you know, down, up, down, down, up, down, because I would be doing alternate, I had a downstroke here, and then I would be starting the string below with an upstroke if I would do that. And that's kind of, you know, throwing the exercise off because you always want to start with a downstroke on the first note. So that's why we have three notes on the first string and four notes on the second to evenly fit into this style of picking perfectly where you have economy going down, alternate going up, and always starting on a downstroke, all right? So that's a really good one to just start getting comfortable with this exercise right away, all right? So I'm just gonna leave it there today and I hope that this was helpful for some of you. I really think that there's a lot of benefit to trying to pick this way. So I really recommend that you try this stuff out if you aren't already. So if anyone has any questions or anything they wanna say, just put it in the comments and in the next episode. Hope you're ready for the next episode, hey. We're finally going to be going deep into some real practical exercises now. So you should really be excited for that. So anyway, that's it. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a like and consider becoming a subscriber as well as a contributor to Patreon where for $5 a month you get all the PDFs that come out on this channel. And if you think anyone else would enjoy the content, please share it with them as well. And I will see you guys in episode 54. Swinging Every and playing time. the blues. <laughs> that's what we. That's what we about. I try to help you.